Hi, and welcome back to the CG Bros. This is Brother Damien, and this is part two of the series showing you how to take an N-Cloth simulation done in Maya and use it to create a fire simulation using 3D Studio Max and FumeFX. In part one, we left off after creating the FumeFX volume and positioning it on the flag. Let's continue on. We'll start by setting our playback range to 300 to match the output range. Let's also set our timeline to 300 frames as well. Here we can set the data channels that we want to export. When I hit the set button, it opens up this dialog which allows us to choose what channels are included and excluded from the simulation. You can also see that what your cache file size will be per frame as you select them. We'll leave these at the defaults for now. Now, we need to create an association or linkage between the flag mesh and the FumeFX volume. We'll do this by creating a FumeFX helper from the helpers menu. Come over to the Create tab and over to the Helpers icon and hit the drop down. Select Fume Effects and under Object Type, select Object Source, as we're going to use an object, the flag, as the source for the fire. We'll cover the other object type sources and how to use them in another series. Drag an icon into the scene. This icon is just a visual representation of this association and tells the Fume Effects volume what mesh based source to use as an emitter. You can think of these object types as emitter types different kinds of emitters that have editable attributes. First we need to link the flag object to the object's source. So hit the pick object icon and select the flag mesh. You should see it load up in the objects list here. We'll keep the defaults for now. Then we need to tell the fume effects volume what source or sources to use. Select the fume effects volume and come up to the modify tab and go to the fume effects UI and over to the object source tab and hit the pick object icon and select the source. You should see it load in the objects list. Let's open up the preview window so we can see our simulation as it runs. Now let's start our simulation by hitting the start default simulation button. You can see that this is simulating rather quickly. That's because we have a relatively large spacing value set up on our grid. Here in the simulation progress window we can see how much RAM is being utilized. I'll pause the video now while it simulates. Okay, let's take a look at what we simulated. We can view the sim in the preview window as we play the timeline, or we can create a RAM preview that can be saved out. That looks pretty interesting. When using fume effects or any other fluid simulator, don't be discouraged when it doesn't look like you want it to right out of the gate. It doesn't start shaping up until you start to tweak on the settings. You always have to tweak the settings to mold and shape your effect. I want to show you that you can also navigate the viewport and see the preview updating in real time even while simulation is in progress. That's pretty cool. We can immediately see that while there is some promising motion, there isn't very much detail. So let's start tweaking. Let's move over to the Sim tab in the FumeFX UI and take a look at the heart of FumeFX. There are a lot of attributes here that work in conjunction with one another and some that tend to work against each other. In other words, changing or lowering of one value usually means the raising of another or others to compensate or fill in. Alright, let's take a look at these system settings. For most fire and smoke simulations, I leave the gravity at the default value of 1. Vorticity is the fluid's tendency to induce vorticular influences between the voxels. I usually increase this, but we'll also leave it at the default for now. Velocity damping is how fast the fluid loses energy. This is used primarily for taming the fluid motion and containing your fluid, helping it not get too unwieldy and out of hand. This helps quite a bit in keeping your fluid volume tight, saving valuable simulation time. Here we have the X, Y, and Z turbulence settings. These are locked with this button, but you can unlock it and set them separately, but I usually keep these locked together. These settings are the strength value of the turbulence for the fume effects volume. Let's set the initial turbulence setting to 0.3. I've learned over time that a little goes a long way when it comes to applying forces to simulations. Here is the turbulence noise section where we set the noise frequency value, the frames value which is the number of frames the frequency is phased or animated across, the detail value, and I always set this to 5, and an offset value that shifts the frequency of the noise. Well, let's stop here and pick it up in the next lesson. See you then!